If you're looking to be just a little bit more productive so you can find and complete all those things that never seem to get done, then you may have come across the popular science-backed morning routine by Dr. Andrew Huberman. And you may have wondered, how do I do this as a real person? And not some fitness influencer who spends all their time posting on Instagram. Yo, yo, it's your homeboy, Sebastian Stud Muffin. Well, wonder no more, as I'm going to test the Huberman morning routine for a real person and find out what works, what doesn't, and give you the real way to put it to work in your life, no matter what you do. So you don't feel guilty, you can't get it working because you have an actual job to go to, you've got real life with real responsibilities, and you don't have a million followers. Huberman's morning routine starts, as most mornings do, when you wake up. So in the first step, Huberman recommends that you get up between 6 and 6.30 of the a.m. Lately, I've been actually waking up between 5 and 5.30. Damn it, can you not let me sleep? Next after you wake up is to get light on your eyes. Now in this part of the world, at this ungodly hour, there's no sunlight out. So you've got to use artificial light. Now this one is a warm light. It's got this orangey glow, so isn't the best thing first thing in the morning. But if you've been making videos for any length of time, like I have, then you're not short of a studio light or two. So I can set one up here. Now you may want to set this up in another room because if you have somebody in the bed beside you, whether that's your other half or that crazy neighbor who keeps breaking into your house and getting into the bed beside you every morning, they may not appreciate their beauty sleep being disturbed by the brightness of the red hot sun. Turn off the light. You don't even live here, lady. But if you don't have sun first thing in the morning or a bajillion studio lights that you can use, then you can get a very inexpensive light bulb from Amazon that'll do the trick. Make sure it's 5500 Kelvin or above, as that's the temperature of natural sunlight. As I'm working on getting the sunlight onto my eyes, it's on to step three. This helps with strengthening your immune system, boosting your energy, and has the added benefit of making your skin glow too. Mmm, soft. And step three is to hydrate. I have lemon and water first thing, but Huberman recommends hydrating with electrolytes. And that means salt. And the brand he recommends is this one, Element. Other videos following this routine also use Element, but unlike them, I'm not sponsored by Element. Now I have used Element in the past, and when I used it, I was actually forced to stop. It caused a major problem in me that took over a month to recover from. But I'm gonna give it one more go, just for you to see if those problems come back. So make sure to stick around to find out what happens. Now, normally at this point, I would also be putting on the kettle for my coffee. But according to Hoopman and research, there's a problem with that. Mm. Your body's still flooded with a hormone called adenosine, which is the hormone that makes you feel sleepy. Adenosine and caffeine share the same receptors in your body. So when you take your morning hit, the adenosine gets kicked off those receptors by the caffeine. So while your caffeine is giving you that morning boost, the adenosine is lying there in wait like a ninja assassin till the caffeine runs out. And then it hops back onto those receptors and knocks you out. So step four is to delay your caffeine intake by 90 to 120 minutes. Now I have to put everything back and redo it again later. So next on the morning routine is to get some exercise. If you can get out and about for a run or a walk, but if you do live in a part of the world where you can get sunshine, when you get up, then go out for a walk and get the sunshine on your eyes so you get a two for one with a bit of exercise too. Because it can be cold and miserable here, I like to do some stretching first thing in the morning. This helps with my active recovery and if I'm stuck for time, I can have a quick one. Ooh, I like a quick one. For the love of all things holy, it's out of my house, lady. And after exercise, it's off for a shower. If you like your hot, steamy shower, Hooperman has something else in mind for you. Now I know what you might be thinking. Do I need to freeze my ass off? Ah! Is he out of his mind and is he naked in this video? <laughs> well, you can let me know what you think the answers are to those last two questions in the comments area below. You don't need to freeze your ass off, ish. You see, raising your core body temperature early in the morning sends a signal to your brain and helps you sleep better at night. You might think that your hot, steamy shower is raising your core body temperature, but it isn't. <coughs> 
To do so, you need to cool your body down and then your body will actually raise its internal core to warm you up. So step six is cold exposure. And in plain English for you and me, means either a cold plunge or a cold shower. <laughs> you only need cold exposure for nine to 11 minutes per week, which in reality is about one and a half to two minutes per day. So you can enjoy your hot, steamy shower as normal, making sure to get those hard to reach places and then have a cold burst at the end. Ah! Now I've taken cold showers for years, but I never get used to that hit of cold whoa, when it hits the skin. Yeah. Oh, oh. And of course, you want to get your head under too. Ooh, yeah. Oh, oh. oh, and my nipples are so hard, they could take someone's eye out. And now you've got the core body temperature of molten lava, it's on to step seven. Now at this point, you're probably thinking it's time for breakfast. Well, it isn't because Huberman likes to fast. He will do a 16 plus hour fast, but it is the time of day for coffee. But before we have that, we will have something else. Huberman adds some athletic greens to his diet. So he uses AG1. Again, unlike other videos on this particular topic, I'm not sponsored by AG1, but I do happen to have my own product that tastes just as bad. Over the years, if you've been interested in your own athletic health, then you've collected so many supplements, you probably have one of those at the back of the cupboard too, just like me. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna mix some of this bad boy up now and use that instead. Yep, still tastes like a but we can have our coffee. Armed with my coffee, it's time to head to the next step. And that's a 90 minute block of focused or deep work. This means putting my phone on do not disturb or even turning it off and eliminating all distractions during this 90 minutes. Staying away from those major distractions that are email and social media means I get a lot more done with my mornings. I'll do the most important thing that needs to be done during this time, which is what Huberman recommends. And with the biggest thing out of the way, all the other tasks for the day become a lot easier. And with his 90 minutes of deep work done, Huberman goes for a workout. 25. He does resistance training about three times a week and then cardio three times a week. Now for the vast majority of people, this is not viable. If this is 11 or 12 o'clock, for anyone who's in a job or who has their own business to run, this is just not gonna happen. Instead, I'll have a little bit of a walkabout and then hit another 90 minute block. Next on Huberman's list, it's food. Huberman has his biggest meal of the day here. Again, for everyone, this is impractical. Not impossible, but not always practical. It can be done, but not everybody has 30 to 40 minutes in their busy morning schedule, especially if you're wrestling with the kids to get them out the door for school. But if you are a fitness influencer and you are sponsored by one of these meal prep companies and you can get your mum to cook your meals for you every day, then you're good. Here you go, son. Thank you, mommy. And you too can prepare this wholesome meal in just 20 minutes. But for the majority of people living in the real world, this may not be possible. Okay, so that's the routine. How do you make it work for you as a real person? What do you say yes to? What do you do from time to time? And what do you say no to faster than your drunken ex trying to play tonsil tennis. Starting with waking up early, this can be done by most people, unless you're a night owl or prefer partying over productivity. If you have a day job, this can work really well, especially if you have a side hustle or that passion project that you're working on. Or if you run your own business like I do, this can work really well, as there's no one around grabbing your attention. And speaking of grabbing your attention, if you have a family, this is probably one of the best things you can do. So you get a focused block of work done before everyone else wakes up and you have to go through your daily wrestling match to get them out the door for school. Next, sun on your eyes. This is an easy one, depending on where you live and the time of year. For most people, during those brighter months, you can pop outside and get a hit of sunlight. But unless you live in a country of constant sunshine, you're gonna to have to use artificial light for part of the year. In winter, this can be a good thing, especially if you suffer from seasonal affective disorder. And with the added benefit of better sleep, this is a definite yes for me. Hydrating is another easy one to do. Do I recommend adding salt? That's up to you. 
But for me, it was a very expensive no. After just three days, I had to stop taking Element because the salt was drying me out. My skin was inflamed, the corners of my mouth were cracking, and I even began to get sores on my tongue. So if you want to try it out, start with inexpensive sea salt because you definitely don't want to make the same expensive mistake I made. Not only did I pay $120 plus shipping to get four months worth of salt to the UK from America, I forgot to cancel the auto ship option and ended up with a second box too. And the same with Athletic Greens or AG1. If you're into it, take it. But if you have a pretty healthy diet, then you probably don't need it. Again, I'm not sponsored by Athletic Greens, so I can say that. Getting light exercise and a cold shower is also easy to implement, but it might only be for warmer months. Getting outside for a 10 minute walk is definitely nicer to do in the sun when it's a bit warmer, because we don't all live in California. When it's cold, wet and miserable, when it's cold, wet and miserable, not many people are motivated to go outside and get drenched. And the same with the cold shower. My late wife, Lena, took 10 years of me recommending them before she took her first cold shower. Even then, she only started with her legs before she would even consider going full body. So if you're cold adverse, this might be a great way to start. Working out late morning and having your main meal of the day shortly afterwards, again, is not practical. And definitely not if you have a job. If you work out before or after work, stick with that as it is the most practical option. Now you can get a high protein meal during your lunch, but typically this is best done by preparing your meals in advance, usually on the weekends. But what made the biggest difference for me in my productivity and one I would highly recommend is getting that focused block of of work done first thing. Research shows that it not only helps you get more productive, but it also helps to get into flow state, which accelerates your productivity even more. For me, I found that not only was I knocking work out during my week, but even on weekends, I was knocking out those little tasks that were lying around for ages and they just got done. It was like I'd become a productivity ninja. <laughs> And I tried something that can make you up to three weeks more productive. Check out the surprising effects it had here.